in my experience, it comes down to two situations. You either have the patient who says, I'm not going to be able to go on with my life. I'm not going to be able to relax and start living life again until I know this is out of me. Okay, and that patient, obviously surgery is the best choice. Then there's other folks who uh, their anxiety is such that it's not something they're going to worry about. They want uh, whatever has the least uh, uh, amount of side effects, which really is non-surgical options. They want something where they're going to be able to continue uh, to do what they're doing now. Um, that's not going to uh, uh, cause them to miss work, et cetera, and that patient, maybe radiation's the best. Anyone who has their prostate removed, uh, whether by robotic surgery as we do today or traditional open surgery, is going to have issues with urinary incontinence um, and oftentimes impotence as well. Uh, one of the muscles that controls uh, urination or one of the sphincter muscles is intimately related to the prostate. So when that's removed, uh, incontinence is a result. Impotence is another issue. Uh, in low-grade disease, we can do what's called a nerve-sparing prostatectomy, which means preserve the tissue where the nerves that control erection should lie. Uh, but it's really an inexact science. The nerves are microscopic. Um, they're not something you can visualize. So whether or not someone has difficulties with erections afterwards um, is, is kind of tough to predict. In terms of side effects of radiation, they're completely different from surgery and tend to be more irritative in nature, meaning burning with urination, getting up at night to go, going more frequently during the day, rushing to the bathroom, sometimes blood in the stool or the urine. Um, and the degree of that can vary. You know, some patients have, you know, almost none, and some patients are really, really bothered by it. I would ask how many the, the doc has done, and more importantly, how many do, have you done in the last year? I think the number of procedures, I would ask them about complication rates, um, what are their rates of incontinence, what are their rates of impotence, um, and, uh, and then again, ask them for, for referrals. You know, are there certain patients that you can talk to? Are there support groups where your patients are involved in that you can steer me to? First and foremost, to uh, cure the patient of the disease. Um, secondly, to minimize side effects and morbidities. Um, and probably lastly, having the patient return to a normal quality of life uh, and their normal routine as quickly as possible.